One of the coolest things Mignon Talbot ever did was discover the Podokosaurus. But drawing the Podokosaurus as well as other paleo creatures can be pretty tricky. Hi, my name's Alana. I'm the illustrator of Daring to Dig, and I'm also a paleo artist. But what is a paleo artist? Paleo artists are folks who depict what they think life on our planet might have looked like in the past. We don't have time travel yet, so a lot of what the world and its animals and plants might have looked like is up for interpretation. Paleo artists like me use three main tools in order to make our art. The first tool, and the most important tool, is the fossil record. Fossils are evidence of past life, usually preserved in rock. The harder a part of a critter, the more likely it is to be fossilized. So skeletons, uh, bones, shells, those kinds of things leave a fossil record. But squishier things, muscles, hair, fur, feathers, that stuff's much less likely to be fossilized. Now, this means that some paleo art is easier to draw than others. If I'm asked to draw an ancient clam, that might not be too tricky if there is a fully preserved fossil. But if I'm asked to draw the Podocosaurus, it might be a lot trickier. For one thing, Animals don't look just like their skeletons. Looking at a human skeleton, there's a lot of information that's missing. And another is that sometimes a skeleton in itself isn't even fully preserved. With the Podokosaurus, there is no complete fossil, which is what leads us to our second tool. The second tool is the relationships between life. Evolution tells us that all living things are related to each other. Every modern animal and plant has ancient relatives that the species evolved from. This is so neat because we can use modern creatures or extant creatures to help us make assumptions about what life might have looked like in the past. A good example of this is the saber-toothed tiger. At some point, someone discovered the Smilodon fossil and they looked at it and they thought, hmm, this looks like a big cat. And they were right. So they might have looked at modern big cats and their skeletons to think how the muscles fit together, what fur might have looked like, to inform their art to make it really good. So even the relationships between ancient creatures can be useful. We've never discovered a complete Podokosaurus skeleton, but we believe that it is related to Coelophysis, and we have better preserved Coelophysis skeletons. And if we think they're related, then that can help us make a more detailed, hopefully more accurate drawing. But what if you have a creature that doesn't seem like it has any modern relatives? The lineage just died off. Look at this thing. What are you? Do you have a mouth? What's your deal? It can't answer you. It's dead. So that's when we really have to use the third tool. Tool number three, your imagination. This is the most personal and probably the trickiest. We want to rely on the science and we want to rely on the relationships animals have between each other. But often the only thing you can do is just fill in the blanks with your own guts, with your own imagination. There's all kinds of paleo art. There's paintings, there's sculptures, there's movies, there's more scientific things. My art tends to be more cartoony because I'm a children's book illustrator. It's a huge field and it needs all kinds of imaginative thinkers to work with scientists to make their ideas come to life. And you can help do that too by making your own paleo art. Just look at a fossil, do a little research on the science, and then draw your best guess of what you think it might have looked like. The world today is completely bananas. There's all kinds of different life on our planet, and it, it's wild and interesting and complex. So who's to say the past wouldn't have had just as interesting looking life? Good luck drawing your own paleo art, and if you want a, a model to base it off of, I've drawn a, a guide to how to draw a cartoony Podokosaurus, like the one I drew in the book. You can fill in the blanks about the exterior. Did it have feathers? Did it have scales? What color was it? All kinds of stuff that we don't know for sure. All right, thank you for your time. Have fun drawing your paleo art.